recent of the Streptobacterium genus. It is calcium independent. It works within a wide range of pH and temperature, and it is not uh, sensitive to high pressure treatment. So, uh, according to what uh, I have already said, and taking in mind what uh, FAO, uh, FAO sorry, have already um, recommended that um, increasing uh, vegetal proteins, the objective of this uh, study that I presented uh, consists on, um, to study the ability of the commercial pea proteins uh, from the point of view of the structural, physical, chemical, and biological properties of the gels that we have uh, obtained in order to make um, suitable gel, gels that can be used as an analogs or to make analogs of meat and seafood products. And to do that, what uh, we did was to study different concentrations of pea proteins and also uh, microbial transport. So moving to the methodology use. Okay. What we did uh, first was, was to determine uh, three different concentrations of, of um, pea protein isolate, 17, 20, and 23%. And we mixed it with 2% uh, with of uh, sodium chloride in order to solubilize as much as possible the proteins. And then we add sodium caseinate, which, uh, which is the enzyme substrate and also some water. And then the whole mixture was homogenized uh, for five minutes at 80 degrees. And then the temperature was reduced and uh, microbial transvitaminase was added in three different concentrations, zero, five, and seven units of microbial transvitaminase per gram of protein. And by last, a vacuum homo <coughs> homogenization of uh, the whole mixture was uh, performed. And the resulting dog was stuffed into a pre-phone casings and subjected to a um, bath or setting period of one hour uh, at 40 degrees and then five degrees overnight. And the next day, the heating treatment was uh, um, 30 minutes at 90 degrees. Um, we determined the uh, composition and the technofunctional properties of the pea protein isolate, as well as the physical chemical, the biological, and the microstructure of the gel that we obtained. And now talking about the result we obtained, um, and concerning the, compos concerning the composition, what we uh, see is that we have a high uh, content of protein, almost 70% of protein, a low content of lipid, uh, 0.5, total carbohydrate uh, less than uh, 30%, including 0.3 starch and 3% of um, fiber, and also a low content of water. And these values are completely normal, considering that we are talking about B protein isolate. And then we also determine some um, technofunctional properties of the B protein isolate. So we determine uh, water holding, water absorption capacity, and also um, oil holding uh, capacity. And these uh, good values of these three properties are related to the high amount of proteins because proteins are the most involved components in determining these uh, properties. And also we, we determine the uh, gelation uh, capacity of these of this big protein isolate, which was 17%. And that is why we started 17%, 20 and 23%, because 17% was the lowest uh, deletion ability. And by last, um, yeah, noting the uh, thermal stability of the global infraction, which is uh, very low, and if you see that we uh, don't have um, denaturation uh, enthalpy, in, in the denaturation temperature and that is of the proteins and that is indicative of protein denaturation, which is uh, normal considering the harsh procedure at which is uh, selected uh, dry piece in order to get the, the protein isolate. Um, a pea, uh, protein isolate are mainly uh, composed of uh, a global fraction, which is uh, normally almost 60% and then the albumin fraction. And within the uh, global fraction, 
we can separate uh, leguming, leguming type, um, alpha and beta, and bicylin uh, type. Now, looking to the electrophoresis gel, in which uh, we can see the uh, protein profile of the different gels with the different uh, microbial transvitaminic concentration, we observe that uh, legumins and basins are the most relevant bands observed in the gel, as well as some aggregate um, proteins that appear at the top of the gel, um, that are proteins of very high molecular weight that do not enter into the uh, gel. Um, when microbial transvitaminase is um, added, what we observe is that basilic in green color and, and legumes in red color decrease. The bands corresponding to that uh, proteins decrease. That is due to the capacity of uh, microbial transvitaminase to link different uh, proteins. And um, proteins of uh, <coughs> or lower molecular weight are not affected um, of, uh, by the microbial transvitaminase. And what we believe uh, that is due to the different location of the reactive residues, especially if the reactive residues is in the um, inner core of the protein, and then the microbial transvitaminase is not able to reach that um, reactive residues. Um, we also studied the uh, secondary structure of the uh, proteins. Um, and in this slide, uh, we have uh, included the uh, values of uh, the most important um, structure of the secondary structure that are band, uh, beta bands and beta sheet aggregates, as well as alpha helix uh, structure. And as you see, uh, looking at the percentages, Beta bands and beta sheet aggregated, which are very stable structure, are the most relevant in these um, gels. And these uh, structures are related with the formation of uh, intermolecular protein, com um, protein complexes, as well as the interaction of amino acid side chains. Moreover, as see uh, how well microbial transvitaminase is uh, added, there is uh, an increase in the beta sheet aggregates. And that is, uh, as I've been uh, saying,
availability of microbial cross vitaminase to link to main cross linking proteins. And however, uh, alpha helix uh, is not, uh, structure is not affected by uh, microbial trans vitaminase or B protein concentration. Um, in this years, we also determine the mechanical properties by culture test. And culture test is a test that is um, usually performed when uh, we want to know um, uh, the ability or the, um, how to say, how good a gel is. Because uh, this uh, test gives us uh, information about the force and the deformation at the breaking uh, point. So, what we see in the, in the figure is that the breaking force and the breaking deformation of the gels made with higher concentration of uh, P protein, 23%, are higher than the rest. Now, see that I haven't included the gels prepared with 17% uh, P protein isolate because uh, they have a very poor texture. So, uh, the, the values obtained. Uh, by this test were not very consistent. That's why they are not in the slide. And moreover, see that uh, when we add five units of microbial transvitaminase, uh, breaking force and breaking deformation also increase. But when we uh, add seven units, both parameters decrease. That is due to the extremely uh, higher formation of gross linking that made that the matrix of our gel becomes greater, and thus very uh, low the formula. In this gel, we have also determined the uh, rheological properties within the linear viscoelastic range. And um, in the slide, I have included the uh, stress, the stress amplitude and the strain amplitude. And these uh, parameters give us uh, structural information of the gel. And that is very helpful to determine if our gel is uh, weak or strong. So um, as you see, the gels made with 23% of B protein isolate exceeded the highest value of the stress and the strain amplitude. And this means that uh, in these uh, particular years, we have um, enhanced uh, connectivity uh, of the structure, and that uh, results in a more strained, stable mm -hmm. structure. And by last, in these years, we also uh, studied the uh, microstructure by scanning electron microscopy and see in, in the images on the top of the, of the slide that uh, in the gels made with 20% of uh, B protein isolate, uh, we cannot see um, relevant differences if uh, we increase microbial transvitaminase concentration. However, in, in the gels made with 23%, um, we have a more compact uh, structure in comparison, in comparison with the gels made with 20%. And also, in the gels made with 23%, when we uh, increase the concentration of microbial transvitaminase, what we obtain is uh, also a more compact structure. So at this stage of, uh, of the study, what we can conclude is that it is possible to make uh, gels with 20 and 23% uh, of uh, B protein isolate, despite of the fact that this um, B protein isolate is somehow in nature. And moreover, well, what we can say is that the addition of five units of microbial transvitaminate is enough to um, get a good gel. So, by last, what we can generally conclude is that uh, the gels made with 23% of uh, B protein isolate and 5 units of microbial transvitaminase is uh, appropriate to make different meat and seafood analogs. Once, and this is important, the color and the flavor are modified, which are appropriate additive depending on the kind of product we want to make. 
Um, that's all. Thank you very much.